if you wanted factor eight concentrates, um, uh, did you uh, specify NHS or commercial or, or a particular type of commercial, or did you simply say we need some factor eight concentrates? We simply said we needed factor eight concentrates. Factor eight, exposing the contaminated blood scandal. W was it ever your understanding that non-A, non-B hepatitis was something mild or harmless or inconsequential? Or did you, whatever it was you understood that it existed, did you always understand it to have potentially severe consequences? Yes, I, I, I understood that it could cause chronic liver disease. Most of the patients you were seeing, you've told us, were mild or moderate haemophiliacs. What, what's the factual basis for your view that that they would have an understanding of hepatitis if you never discussed that with them? I, I, I don't know whether they would have had knowledge of it or not. Um, I, I didn't... I don't remember discussing with a patient that my treatment might transmit hepatitis. Do you accept, at least with the benefit of hindsight, that the practice you're describing ran the risk that patients were receiving treatment in circumstances where the potential risks of that treatment had not been explained to them? Yeah, that's, that is um, eminently possible. May I, may I ask a, a question? Um, you, you've said that you, when you spoke to patients about their participation in the 8Y trial, um, you said you were taking liver function tests to see if uh, the 8Y gave them uh, non-A, non-B hepatitis. Did you yes. uh, did you also tell them? Did anyone say, look, why why are you, why are you giving me something that could give me hepatitis, uh, anything of that sort, or did you uh, head that off at the pass by saying that the treatment you've already been having carried that risk anyway? I, I can't remember um, what sort of discussions I had with patients about the 8Y um, protocol at the time. I'm sorry, but I can't remember. See, just, just for a moment, I, I pictured myself sitting there as you're consulting with me and saying, I, I want to take this test to see if what I'm giving you is giving you a disease. Uh, and I, the questions I, I think I, I might ask, and might have, always have felt inclined to ask, even in the 1980s, would be, well, what will that do to me if I get it? Or why are you giving me something that will give me a disease? Um, was there any, do you remember any, any conversation at all like that? I don't. <sighs> Did you tell this patient of the possible risk of AIDS from the receipt of concentrates? No, I didn't. Um, do you think you should have done? In hindsight, yes, I, I, I think I should have done. If you had been in receipt of the AIDS advisory document that we looked at, the 14th of December document, by this time, do you think your treatment of him would have been different? Yes, I think I would have attempted to um, get hold of heated product, heated concentrate. The, the, this patient was tested for HTLV3, therefore without his knowledge and consent, wasn't he? That's correct. And as I understand your statement, that was the approach that was taken more generally to the testing of your other patients for HTLV3. They were tested without their knowledge and consent. Yes. Um, um, and to what extent were, uh, or, or what proportion of bleeds that you customarily treated in, in the first half of the 80s were life-threatening. Was that something that you ever came across? No, it wasn't. Factor 8. Exposed.
exposing the contaminated blood scandal 